Hello everyone, this is Marco and welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be quite different from the rest. If you've been following me for quite a while, you know that I delve into customization and I design my own figures and I repaint and all of that stuff. But I thought I'd make a video on the Raptor Squad, just talking about their differences with their physical appearance, clearing up any confusion with their designs, explaining a couple of misconceptions and all that sort of stuff. I've been wanting to talk about the Raptor Squad's design for quite a bit, but this idea was solidified by a couple of requests that I got on my YouTube videos and on my Discord. Also, I haven't seen or heard a single seagull today, so I thought I'd take advantage of this situation and finally get to record this video. So first of all, let's talk about uh, what the Raptor Squad actually is. By delving a little bit into the lore, it helps us understand and identify some aspects of these raptors. The Raptor Squad is uh, the Velociraptor pack that appeared in Jurassic World. It is not actually a canon name, it was a name given by the community. It's a pack of four Velociraptors that lived in the Jurassic World theme park, and the members of the pack are Blue, Charlie, Delta and Echo. They have all got their own look and design, and somewhat of a personality too. You might have noticed that the names of the raptors are quite similar to the NATO alphabet. This solidifies the connection between InGen and the military, but we'll get to that soon. So originally Simon Mazrani, the owner of Jurassic World and of InGen, didn't have any plans to exhibit any kind of velociraptor in his park. That is due to their violent and uncontrollable and ferocious nature. Because of these dangerous aspects and traits, Vic Hoskins, the leader of the InGen security, considered these traits as a potential weapon, and he wished to apply the Velociraptor's intelligence and problem-solving minds for warfare, he planned to use them as attack dogs under command of human beings. Some of these are direct quotes from the Jurassic Park wiki. So InGen security hired the US Navy and animal behaviorist Owen Grady to help raise and train Velociraptors for potential warfare. Despite not agreeing with Hoskins' goals, Owen accepted the job and worked on site at Jurassic World's restricted area, alongside his friend Barry. The study was to determine what traits could be designed in the lab or inherited. This project is called the IBRIS project, which is short for Integrated Behavioral Raptor Intelligence Study. It began development in 2012. So the Raptor Squad was specifically created by InGen for the Ibris project. Initially with Blue and three other unknown raptors. Three of those raptors died, unfortunately, and Blue was the only survivor. After this, Charlie, Delta and Echo were cloned and introduced to Blue. Each raptor had the DNA of other animals and their genes, with Blue having black-throated monitor lizard, Charlie having green iguana, Delta having the DNA of birds, Echo's details aren't specified at all. When they were born, Owen Grady imprinted on them, and this allowed him to train them. During this time, Owen recorded some video logs, some of which we see in Fallen Kingdom with the baby raptor squad. In that scene, we realize how different Blue is from the rest of the pack. She began to exhibit some leadership traits, and the rest of the squad would follow her commands. Blue also proved to be quite empathetic, and developed a very strong bond with Owen, which led Owen to become the alpha of the pack. Sometime during their youth, Blue and Echo fought for dominance over the pack, with Blue being the victor. As a result, this not only gave Echo a permanent scar across her face, but dislocated her jaw. Due to her permanent sneer, some of the Jurassic World dinosaur handlers nicknamed her Elvis. This is a very important detail and helps us differentiate Echo from the rest of the pack. So we now know that Blue is the raptor in command. She is the eldest of the pack too. She is about 3.9 meters long and 1.7 meters tall. Generally, her main body color is a grayish blue. But the feature that sticks out most to the eye is her blue stripes, one on each side of her body. The blue stripes have a very subtle white outline around them too. The stripe on the right hand side starts from around the eye and goes all the way down to the tip of the tail. But on the other side it starts from behind the head and it goes all the way down her body, down to the tip of the tail. The presence of the blue stripes are a direct result from having the DNA of the black-throated African monitor lizards. One key difference though is that in real life the lizard stripe is black, but we'll talk more about that in the concept art section of this video. 
as of now, Blue is still alive. That's uh, in the film canon, by the way, not real life. These things don't exist. So following alphabetical order, the next raptor is Charlie. Although she is the youngest one of the pack, Charlie is a brighter green than any of the other raptors. Described in the wiki, she is a forest green with dark green vertical stripes running down her back. It makes her patterns quite similar to the ones in The Lost World, Jurassic Park, with a key difference that she doesn't have any striping happening at all on her head, alongside the fact that she's green and not orange. She does sport some counter shading too, which means that the bottom half of her body, including her bottom jaw, is of a much lighter shade than the top half of her body. The counter shading is like a creamy grey colour. Blue does have some sort of counter shading, but is just so subtle that I didn't include it in the description earlier. So Charlie does have some green stripes going down vertically on her body, but similar to how Blue has some white outlines on her stripes, Charlie does have some white happening around her stripes too, although it is very, very subtle. Next is Delta. She is green too, but she's a bit more of a darker shade. In the wiki, she is described as being a teal color with no stripes on her back or tail. Yes, this description is a little strange, but it's not untrue. The designs on her body aren't stripes. They're much more of a randomized pattern, a little bit like camouflage on a military vehicle. I'd say her body is of a darker green and the patterns are a dark teal. These randomized patterns are present throughout her whole body, with the exception of the neck. The neck sports some very, very fine vertical stripes, similar to Charlie and Blue, there are some white elements. These, however, are some really extremely fine white lines placed in between the darker teal patterns or stripes. Like Charlie, she does have some counter shading going on too. But yes, contrary to what the wiki says, Delta does have patterns on her neck and tail too. In fact, her whole top half of her body is covered with patterns from the tip of her snout to the tip of her tail. Now, some people are convinced that she has some gold on her too, specifically on her hips. And if we look at the picture right here, we can definitely see some goldish beige happening around there. But I'm not sure if that's an actual part of her pattern or if it's just a bit of dirt on her. Next is Echo. Now, Echo has two different designs in the Jurassic World franchise, unfortunately. We'll be focusing on the film, a movie version. The Camp Cretaceous version is quite a bit different. So the movie version of Echo is really cool. She's quite different from the rest of her pack members. In the wiki, she's described as having a mostly brown body with dark blue striping, as well as having dark blue around her eyes. Describing the colors of Echo isn't easy, I don't think, because she is mostly brown, but she's kind of beige as well. She's more on the yellow side of brown, I think. However, in certain shots of the movie, she looks a bit more orange. The colour of her patterns look quite different in varying shots. In some shots, the patterns look dark blue, and in others they look like teal. Personally, I think they look a bit more teal than blue, but having a brown and teal or blue colour palette makes her quite unique. Just like Delta, she doesn't have many stripes at all. Actually, I should say that most of her body is covered with that randomised pattern very similar to Delta, but Echo doesn't seem to have those stripes on the back of her head. In any case, we don't get a very close look at Echo in the film, but she does have one very obvious defining characteristic, and that is the scar on the side of her face. Now, the Camp Cretaceous version is quite a bit different. She's a dark orangey brown with almost black stripes. It's unclear why they changed the design, but it's probably due to the confusion behind the scenes from Universal, but we'll talk more about that later. But canonically, she is that uh, brown and blue teal color. Now let's take a closer look at their head shapes. Universal and ILM, Industrial Light and Magic, the people that designed these characters, have been quite clever. Instead of modeling or sculpting four distinct different dinosaurs, they made two different sculpts. And what did they do for the other two raptors? They just picked elements from each sculpt and mixed them together, which is quite a time-saving decision, and it still looks amazing. As I mentioned, there are two main different sculpts, which are used for Blue and Delta, while Charlie and Echo are a mixture of those two sculpts. You'll see what I mean when we examine each raptor individually. Let's start with Blue. Blue's head type has got more of a wedge shape, 
The top of her snout doesn't present any kind of cresting going on, so it looks quite straight and smooth. Her mouth line is quite straight and smooth too. The bottom jaw looks quite streamlined and has quite a bit of pebbly texture going on too. On the other hand, Delta's sculpt is quite different. The top of her snout presents quite a pronounced crest. The mouth line presents quite a strong and rounded cheek as well. The jaw looks a little bit more bulky and has no pebbly texture on the side. So these are the key differences between the two sculpt. As I said, Charlie and Echo are a mix of these features. If we take a look at Charlie, the top half of her head is the same as Delta's. She has the crest on the snout and she has quite a pronounced round cheek. As you can see on the side of the jaw, there's that pebbly texture present too. So Charlie has the top part of the head of Delta and the bottom jaw of Blue. Well, Echo is the complete opposite. She shares the same exact head type as Blue, so her snout is quite straight with no crest and a straighter mouth line. But her bottom jaw is like the one from Delta, a more robust look and no pebbly texture on the side. What's neat though is that the designers didn't stop there and added some unique features to each and every raptor. For example, Charlie has some scars behind her right nostril and obviously Echo has that massive scar on the side of her face. Delta has one extra big difference, and that is the shape of her eye pupil. While all the other raptors from the raptor squad have a very normal looking slit pupil, Delta's one looks a little bit more irregular, similar to that of a gecko. Originally, the plans for her design were quite different, but we'll talk more about that in the concept art section. Another detail that differentiates the raptors, although a lot more subtle, is their teeth. Some of the raptors have got different missing teeth, with Echo being a very clear example. Due to her having her scar on the side of her snout, she's missing some teeth around that area, while the other raptors are missing some more random ones. Some of the common features these raptors have are some of the scales on their faces. They all have some pretty pronounced sharp looking scales on their cheeks, a larger scale on their snout, and some nice pointy ones going down their necks. Also their body models are pretty much exactly the same. Although it is stated in the film, or in other media I don't really remember exactly, the blue is slightly larger than the rest. Although in the film, physically, dimensions wise, she looks exactly the same as the others. So where does all the confusion stem from? A lot of people are getting their names wrong and their patterns and colors wrong, especially with big companies like Mattel and Hasbro. They've really struggled getting their colors right and their shapes right and all of that. So during production of a movie, towards the end of the production, a style guide is produced with all the finalized designs of each creature and character so that in sequels or other media and merchandise, they can all be portrayed accurately. Now, I have a very strong suspicion that Universal Style Guide for the Jurassic World franchise is a little bit of a mess, and they don't have the finalized designs in their style guide. In some of the early concept art, the Raptor Squad was supposed to look very different. For example, Delta was supposed to have a rounder pupil due to the presence of bird DNA. Also, I think Delta was supposed to be brown with green colors. Echo's patterns were very different and Blue had a black stripe. I'm not exactly sure on all those details, but you get the point. Uh, Universal style guides are a little bit of a mess. In fact, I think if I can recall correctly, in the Beyond the Gates episode where Mattel unveiled the Hammond Collection Blue, I think they mentioned that Blue was originally designed to have a black stripe and that it changed later on. Also, the Hasbro figures are a very clear example, although we don't really like to talk about these figures much. Their patterns and colors are quite different and they're quite similar to what the concept art originally portrayed them as. So yes, this is to say that I can see where all the confusion stems from. Also, at a quick glance, all the raptors kind of look very similar in the film, at a very quick glance. But once you start paying attention and looking frame by frame, you can definitely tell all the differences and you're able to tell the characters apart. I remember looking up pictures of the raptor squad for my own reference material for when painting and repainting figures and designing stuff. I just couldn't find enough film accurate, reliable material unless I went through frame by frame while watching the movies. Unfortunately, what Google Images can provide isn't always accurate, as at the time, 
was mostly random fan art, which wasn't always accurate, and very blurry screen grabs. Also, we know that Mattel uses Google Images for reference. During their Beyond the Gates, they showed some of their prototype designs, and you can see attached to those designs and sketches, some fan art, and some Google Images search results. So I'm not surprised that with a combination of superficial Google Images search results and not up-to-date style guides, Mattel did have some issues portraying the Raptor Squad. So the lack of reference material online and noticing this confusion in the community, a group of people in the community decided to group together and create a more reliable style guide for everyone for free to use. And hopefully Mattel is using that too. I'll leave a link in the description for the Jurassic Park Dinosaur Style Guide and the Jurassic World Dinosaur Style Guide. So that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in this video. It's a good time to end this recording too because some seagulls have finally decided to show up. <laughs> so I hope what we talked in this video today clears up some of the confusion and helps you identify every member of the Raptor Squad properly. So I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. I would like to give a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. Seriously guys, your support really does mean the world to me as it helps me do what I love for you. You help me buy materials and most of all, you give me a helping hand with improving the quality of the content of my videos. Even if it's just a small donation, every little helps.